Welcome back to Heroes on Our Island. I'm your host, Christine Persichetti. Now let's head to Hicksville, to a league that has some 30,000 kids involved. And it's all thanks to the thousands of volunteers who help keep Nassau County's Police Activity League going. Whether on the hardwood, all right, send you the all the way to the mat. or on the dance floor, there's always something going on here at the Hicksville Athletic Facility. It's like a fun atmosphere. Fun and competitive. There's good competition in it. There's, there's a lot of competition in it. Um, it's a good thing because you stay involved with basketball and stuff, so it's a good thing. Andre Morse of Hempstead started playing PAL basketball when he was 10. He credits his time on the court for keeping him out of trouble. It, it helped me a lot because it, it, kept me, it kept me off the streets. It was better for me to be in a sport that I like to do instead of being on the streets and doing other things that I'm not supposed to do. That's exactly the reason why the Nassau County Police Activity League was started in 1940 by the county's first police commissioner. He thought that there should be interaction between police officers and youth, and he also thought that this was a way to curb juvenile delinquency. Fast forward 75 years, the mission's the same. The name of the game is to keep the kids busy. If we keep the kids busy, we keep them out of trouble. And that's what basically PAO is all about. Our motto is, it's better to build youth than to mend adults. And they definitely keep busy around here. Sergeant Doug Kenna is the commanding officer of the Nassau County PAL. He says there's a lot more than just basketball and ballet. We offer such a wide array of programs. We offer fencing. We offer badminton, indoor tennis. We have hip hop. We have tumbling. What makes the PAL different from any other league is the fans in blue. The community and the children get to see the police officers in a different light. So they get to see the police officers as coaches. They get to see the police officers as their neighbors and their friends. So when it comes to interacting with the police at any stage in their life, they can remember, you know, that the, pol the police officers, you know, are also, you know, um, regular, you know, regular people too. There are 29 different PAL units in the county covering 40 different communities and there are five police officers assigned to it. It is a non-profit organization, so they look to volunteers for the assist in keeping it going. We have the best volunteer base in the country. They're so dedicated to these kids and to this program and it's, it, you know, they deserve, uh, you know, most of the credit. People like Frank DiVittorio, he retired from the police department in 2002, but never left the PAL. He now serves as its president. It was so much a part of my life, and the unit itself started to be scaled down, and there was a need for more help. We used to have 32 police officers assigned to PAL, uh, and now there's five. Chris Kiriakou volunteers his time as the treasurer and also as a coach. He says he started volunteering after college as a way to give back to the community. We're here to serve the community. We're not a for-profit. We're not trying to make money off of the kids. We're trying to give them back as much as we can. A lot of the kids get scholarships from the Police Activity League. And while they do have to collect a fee from each player, they say they're the cheapest game in town. We have things that range from $40, $50. Even here in the building, we have some activities that are under $100. Our camps that we run during the summer, um, I think are probably the, the best deal in the country. Um, I think they were $120 for one week of basketball camp. He pulls up for a long one. Short. Ed Dempsey is the one who organizes the summer basketball camps. It's unbelievable, especially when you get to Thursday and Friday and we have playoff games. The kids are just all excited. But he says camp isn't all about shooting hoops. During the camps, we bring in speakers to talk about drugs and alcohol. Uh, so that the kids understand that it's not just about playing sports. And one of the whole purposes of the PAL is to keep kids off the streets and away from drugs and alcohol. So by coming to camps like this and having speakers, um, they're exposed to the negativity of using drugs and alcohol. They hold fundraisers to offset the cost of the camps and other programs. Nassau PAL created the first PAL special needs unit for kids with developmental disabilities. The kids get so much out of it. Our computer program, for example, teaches the kids safety on the computer. Our Zumba and dance programs give a lot of uh, recreational. And the most important thing with these kids is the socialization, to be with others that are just like them. Harvey Pollack volunteers as their basketball coach. This is a great coach I ever met. Why? 
because he is the best. The special needs program has become a model for all other units of the PAL, which is something Harvey's proud of. I got started in it because I'm a father of a special needs person, but I've uh, grown to love and see these kids grow up in front of me and see how much joy they get uh, of our program. And that joy doesn't end when you hear the final buzzer. You actually do uh, create a lasting you know, bond between the community and the, uh, the parents and the children. Nassau County is one of the six original PALs in the entire country. If you'd like to learn more about the heroes we just featured, or if you know a hero in your community, let us know. Visit our website at fios1newsli.com. Follow us on Twitter at HeroesLI. And like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash heroes Long Island.